flywheel cover gone off of a 630 that can only mean one thing that evil foul demon of a starter had to come out from under it uh, I don't know that taking a starter off is necessarily a bad such a horrible thing for those of you that have ever fooled two cylinders you know they stuck them in the worst place you can put something which is under the bottom uh, the getting it out is not so bad the putting it in it's a little bit more uh, a little bit more strenuous you got to get under there and push it in the wires under here that operate it you've got to pull the wires out out of there up through there and out from in behind the flywheel and put a piece of bailing wire on and get your starter in and you got to snake the wires back in because there is no way to put that starter in there with them wires still hanging in that hole uh, I'm not sure. These 30 series, boy, the collectors sure do like them. I really ain't so sure why, but they do. That's just because most of them guys must hire someone to fix their storm. But this is why I had to take it out. Uh, I don't know if you can notice that there is guts of the drive hanging out. That thing used to sit in there like that at some point and cover all that up. And I think what tore it all up is is there's supposed to be on that groove yeah, back it up right and see my own finger there's a groove right there there's supposed to be a little hardened wire snap ring or tension uh, i don't know what you want to call it hardened it's a spring tension clip it'll pop on there and there's a little old hardened piece i don't even know what to say it looks like it looks like a metal lifesaver and it clips over that and they lock together and it holds this from going out too far when the solenoid is your solenoid activated 2620 60s and 80s all pedal operated uh, which was true for any 20 series or early number series or letter series um, and it just pretty much machined the uh, pretty much just machined it off you can see right there it's a uh, it's had a extremely hard time but anyhow um and these starters are getting a little hard to come by 630s and gasoline burn 730s was the only well let me rephrase that 730 gases and 730 lps would have had the same starter 730 diesels had a completely different starter but these tractors are kind of some odd ducks in in the respect that um when deer made this tractor they were three with two cylinders. They already knew it. Um, the 60, well, I'm just using these because 50s, 50s, 60s, 70s are all in that, all fall in the same category. But the 60 was built on purpose. Let's just use it for an example. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 was built on purpose. They needed something different. Brought a few more advancements on. By 1956, a 3010 prototype was already at the test works. Um, the first one actually had a three had a 400 what was that thing i made a 351 gmc v6 maybe it was a 351 gmc v6 powered it um when they went to the 20 series in late 56 they changed the tail end back here i've got my hitch off but the the first real three-point hitch was available i took it off because when you slide it in the links are always like banging around you know so i just get tired of that but anyhow i uh, went to that and went to a separate um, your remote cylinder is separated from the rock shaft where as when you plug it in on a A or a 60 you know you lose your lift well it's separated um, so they did that on the 20 series and, and did it on purpose because they weren't ready and by the 1950 late 57 the they thought they were I had a book I've got a book somewhere at home that our engineer wrote on this subject he said by late 57 we really thought we were about to drop the 10 series out but they weren't quite ready so they were she went to scrambling and essentially brought out the 30 series and the biggest thing most people notice is the steering rod is now hidden under the top um and they went from and they modernized by going to a push button start which means they put a solenoid on there um on the starter set of a stomp pedal and that's about it um now when you go from a early like a 60 50 60 70 up to a 20 and 30 series the engine is slightly different um 
these they shorten the stroke and they increase the bore so as if a a is a predecessor of a cc 620 when they left 60 and went to the next two they actually use a g they didn't use a g piston but it's got the same bore as a g they shorten the stroke because thousand rpm was coming uh they thought thousand everybody thought thousand was it it was going to be it and if you'll notice here um, you see the 540 stub sticking out, but that other cap plate is for a thousand shaft. If you can get one, you can take that cover off and put you a thousand shaft in there, just cram it in, tighten it up, and you're ready to go run a thousand RPM equipment. But these things, there is one other design flaw. Inside of there, you might think you pour oil in and it just slops it around and lubricates it, but it doesn't. There's a pump way up in there at the very front end where the power shaft comes through the transmission into the PTO there is a pump in there and that pump I wouldn't call it pressure lubrication more or less that it's kind of like flow lubrication push it around lubrication the only downside of that is it's the only thing keeping the oil from back in the back which originally would have been it was same as would have been in the hydraulic system which would have been 38 motor oil uh, now we just use we use high guard, John Deere high guard in them, but irregardless, we went from the only thing keeping your now high guard out of your transmission gear oil is one lip seal. One. I.e., there are only two kinds of these tractors out there the ones that have had that seal put in and the ones that need that seal put in because. And you know if you've got one, because you have to stick a bucket up under it every once in a while, open the check plug on the transmission, catch two gallons of oil, and do something with it, because that pump just continuously pumps that oil up in there. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a little trip to the starter shop. I guess I got kind of on a tangent there, but uh, these was these was durable old things they served a purpose a long time they did well i don't necessarily hate the tractor it's just a little aggravating to work on in some ways um it's the only tractor that i'm aware of that to remove the crankshaft you have to take the right brake off um, but they were designed early on for farmers and the notion you have to keep in your mind is most farmers had no cement floors no jack stands no way to split anything so they were looking at a tractor to be repairable with, by keep holding itself up so you can rebuild the engine without taking anything apart you can rebuild they can put new clutch linings in without splitting the tractor in half and that was a lot of their mentality was we want a tractor that a farmer can fix in the tool shed now were they successful i suppose so uh, is there ways they could have improved absolutely but basically you're looking at a tractor that deer never really meant to exist they were they were ready by, excuse me, they were ready by the time we got to 58. They were thinking they were going to be at four and six cylinders, but they, they had to have two more years. And uh, some say that, that engineer said there was so much espionage going on between them and IH at the time that they, they brought this model out, this series out, to try to get um, IH to go ahead and bring that 46560 60 on the market so that they would have a four and five sixty out whenever deer launched their 10 series but i guess all that speculation but anyway trip for me to the starter shop we'll catch y'all later